What up? Here we are with the J12. We're going to do a quick video on how to do the reg testing on this marker. <clears throat> As you can see, I got the grip off to save us a little bit of time on the video. But what I've got here from uh, SSC Super Staunchy Customs, he can be found on M. Carter Brown. Um, and you'll likely see one coming from CCM very soon, is this piece here, which I'll just cover up the rest, which essentially allows you to, to test the regulator, which in the past has been able to unscrew on previous markers, been able to unscrew and you could just use, uh, you know, something like this, uh, an Air America Guardian, or just make your own reg tester, which is in other videos. I'll link one, link that right now if you're looking for that video. But this one took a little special part. It's really not all that special. Um, all you really needed to do is to simulate this front block, this front rod, excuse me, going into this front block and connecting the um, valve body together so that this would seal and you could test what pressure this regulator was putting out. Okay, so what Staunchy did and, and what uh, CCM has done with a couple of things, and again, they're not really sure if they're going to turn out their own. If they do by now, then you just pick up one of those. But um, what they did is they took an old Series 5 um, uh, pump front end and just took off the, the, uh, the pump guide rod and then tapped it to, to accept a 3 8 inch national pipe thread, which is what this adapter is. And what I did here when I got it from Staunchy like this, it wasn't expensive. It's really well made. It's CNC milled, very clean. It's not anodized, but it doesn't need to be. Um, it's, this is going to sit like this. I'm going to test this thing once a month. It was, it was very well done. He sells them with gauges and without. And what I like to do with my stuff, because I've got uh, you know other kits and I always have quick, quick disconnects on the end of them, um, I like to have multiple, multiple gauges for different uh, applications. Now, I do have one sort of expensive do-all gauge, um, which is this liquid-filled gauge. It's, been, it's, been, it's seen better times, but it's not the fastest recharging, so it's not good to test recharge with necessarily, but it is the most accurate that I have. These button gauges here can be inaccurate. This, this center flag, for instance, you know, those are plus or minus 10%. So what I tend to know is just where the needle is when I set it correctly, and then uh, I can come back to it later and, and just, it, you know, it has to be the right number per se. It just needs to be a consistent number. So do what you want to do. Um, and again, this one was from uh, Sushi, Super Staunchy Customs. You can find him on Super Staunchy Customs on Facebook. Um, or again, you can find him on M. Carter Brown. Good guy. Good guy. Good people. Anyway, let's, let's do this really quick and see what we come up with. All you're going to do is loosen up the two bolts here, or the two uh, 1 8 inch Allen key screws here, and take off the uh, grip frame. There's plenty of that on other videos. Um, take out the bolt, which is just a quick disconnect bolt, quick turn bolt. Knock it over, of course. Turn that 90 degrees and turn it sideways. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take out the valve body retention screw. I like to put a little bit of pressure on this, this way, and so that it doesn't, it is under a little bit of spring pressure from the hammer on the valve. Um, turn it upside down like this. Hope you guys can see that. Take that out, and then you'll see that body kick forward just a little bit. You'll know that it's ready to slide out of the gun body. Set the gun body aside. Pull the pump back. This is a, normally has a return spring, but I'm doing some testing without return springs right now, so you're not seeing that move around. Sometimes you have to hold it under pressure like this. Slight tension amongst these two fingers so that you can turn the back block off. Okay. And then you're going to want to take the pump kit off the front like such. Then you're going to need a 3 16 wrench. And that's not it. You're going to need a 3 16 wrench. Ugh. Didn't have it ready. I thought my video was all ready. Tells me what to... Th I should stop thinking. It's not even in my job description. What am I? A philosopher or something? No. Anyway, take that out. And then you're ready to put in the regulator adapter. Now again, whether you pick up from Staunchy or you pick this up from CCM, what I did is I put in another O-ring right on the front of here, and that's the O-ring that fits on the pump kit uh, uh, guide rod as is, and I'm trying to get you that number right now. That is an N70015 regulator, or excuse me, uh, O-ring. I just put that on there so I don't have to, to rob it off of my, this arm. if you need to rob, you, you know, take it off of there, it's no big deal, but now it's just on there and it's permanently and it's dedicated, okay? So, set this spring in here, so the spring is, 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 is straight up and down, drop this in and carefully thread that in. It's aluminum on aluminum, so, you know, be careful. I would even grease that up if you're a little bit nervous, it could gall, and I, I wouldn't want you to get stuck in there and have that permanently ruined, so grease it up a little bit as I did. Um, 
Now, this is a slide check. You don't have to put this on there. Staunchy sells them with just a, a, a gauge sitting off the front. That's fine, that's fine. I like to test recharge, and I had a slide check sitting around. In fact, I had a couple. I don't, I don't even know where I find this crap. But uh, I had a couple of them sitting around. Here's, a, here's what a slide check looks like when it's alone. Actually, it has the um, quick disconnect on the end. Then I put a quick disconnect nipple on there. It's also known as a downstream bleed. They're only about 10 bucks. You can, you can rob them off someone's old remote line, you know, a, a, a teammate or whatever that plays uh, um, scenario ball, you know, when he's not really paid attention, just steal his uh, slide check and you'll be all set. Then what you can use is the ASA from the marker and use the uh, macro line here. I happen to have, you know, an on off, which I like to use that for this situation. So I just, merely plug it in here all right now notice i don't have the gauge on it as long as the, the downstream bleed is set in this off position air will only get to this part of the downstream bleed so i turn it on everything airs up okay now the valve is now aired up okay and so if you give it a tap with something that's fairly firm you can hear air coming out of there right so you know that that's aired up I'm gonna grab this smaller gauge, bump my, uh, there we go. Actually, I'll grab this zero to 300. And uh, I'll do zero to 700. Grab that and I'll turn it on. Hopefully you guys can see that. And that should be right at about 300. This one came from the factory at about 280. Now I can just check recharge rate on this by doing that. Um, now, if I want to have it a little bit more accurate, I'm going to use this big Mac Daddy, big beastie, and plug it in and turn it on and see what that went to. And that goes to about 282, something like that. Now, what do you set it at? Well, Rod at the factory sets this with a really high precision gauge. It's pretty cool. Um, a high precision gauge that you know tests down to about one psi so he knows exactly what he sets it at but these guns you know there's oh, they're always a little bit different from from marker to marker watch i just degassed that took the pressure off the line and now the reg tester is able to come out that's all there is to it you know once you know what you need to set your marker at um you just do that degas it and you're set so if you ever clean the reg and you ever take everything apart you know what to set it at when you go back together and for the most part you're going to be right now, Rod sets them at basically 275, and then he walks over to the chrono and checks out to see where it's at. He wants consistency over the regulator. He wants sweep of, um, so he wants some motion in the, uh, uh, in the IVG, so he can, he can change velocity. And he's gonna start at about 275, and then he's gonna quote, sweet spot it, meaning set up the marker with the most range of motion, ease of use for the player, and yet is, the, is as efficient as it can get in the short amount of time that Rod has to put together every marker you know, in existence at CCM. Now, he's not gonna spend as much time as you would, nor is he gonna dial it into some super, you know, tournament level. He's gonna set it up for the end user that he knows is gonna work in a high variety of situations. So, as you get your marker, you can play with it a little bit, but I gotta be honest, I set this one, I get this one I got from at 280, I did dink with it a little bit, I set it right back at 280, because that's what worked. Rod tends to know his stuff. So, that's what I do for now. I set it at 275, if you're just setting up the marker, sweet spot it. Sweet spot it, shoot it, make sure it shoots right and shoots accurately and shoots consistently as you want it. And then put it, take it apart, you know, test the regulator again. And if this is a dedicated reg tester to this marker, then take your marker, man. Take a take a Sharpie, you know, and just mark out where you want that to be on that regulator gauge or on that gauge and set it down, put it in your kit. Now you know. You know what's gonna work for this marker out of the box. And you know what it needs to be set at to run again. So, I mean, it's a really simple thing to test. It took a very simple adapter. Staunchy wrote this code up on, on, a, on a CNC machine, like within a day, he had pictures of it up. Uh, he forgot to drill the banjo bolt, but we won't tell him that. Once he drilled that hole, these were ready to rock and roll and he's already sold a, a, you know, a small batch of them. So, so look for that, look at maybe a one for coming from CCM. It's not very difficult uh, to manufacture and it makes your job a lot, a lot easier. I don't think, however, with all that said, that you necessarily need one. Um, I think you can sweet spot this thing, leave it at about, you know, a little bit about flush and see what it's doing, right? Just sweet spot it and then you'll know basically where the gauge is. These markers are analog, they're not digital. You're not gonna blow up a solenoid. You're not gonna break anything massively. 
the reality is that you might have a gun that shoots a little bit less efficiency or efficiently or more efficiently. But I've heard Chuffy Series Sixes and I've heard Poppy Series Sixes and knew that the, the marker was set up wrong, but they were still shooting people in the face. I don't care. So anyway, do your thing. You got that out there. Check out Super Staunchy. I'll put a link down here to um, his Facebook and you'll be able to check him out and hit him up. And uh, uh, you know, CCM is always easy to contact. Um, so that's it. This is TF. Thanks for watching.